Right, full disclosure, I forgot to turn the microphone on for the whole of this match. I've got the camera audio. Um, it sounds terrible, but you can't exactly miss this one out and re-record and do another episode, can you? So, And this is the FA Cup final with really bad audio, and I apologise for that. And, you know, I, not a lot I can do about it now, but hopefully it won't put you off too much. And enjoy the episode anyway. Thank you very much. And, yeah, sorry again about it sounding rubbish. It'll be better tomorrow, promise. Roberto Mancini has evidently been feeling the pressure a lot going into this match. How will you be looking to capitalise on his mental state? Well, I've long had my uh, my theories on the mental state of Roberto Mancini. I remember when we were both sat in the uh, in the reception area of Manchester City when we were both applying for the job earlier in the season. Uh, the man was a nervous wreck. Um, he just kept rocking backwards and forward. I'm a club legend. Let them hire me. I'm a club legend. Let them hire me. Um... Uh, ultimately, he got the job, but you know, I I will be looking to remind him um, that that happened before the game. I'm why not use this forum for it now? Roberto, it wasn't a good look. It's unusual to see a manager admitting to nerves. Quite so, frankly, is there a chance that this negativity about your chances on Saturday could affect your side's performance? I mean, I'm I'm not. I don't even know. I don't understand the question. I'm not negative. I'm not nervous. Uh, we've been here before. Um, we've been to Wembley. I've lost count of the amount of times over the last few seasons. Um, this is our se- this is our second FA Cup final in three years. We won last time, and um, we've got as far as the semi final for four years on the trot now. Um, I uh, I'm I'm very confident going into this game, and I'm I'm a little confused about your mental state. If you're suggesting that uh, that we're anything other than confident going into this match, will we see any changes to your first team lineup for the big match? Um. I think it's it's fairly clear for all to see what our what our team is going to be for today's game. Um, when you've got players as good as we have, why would you chop and change things? We've got the competition's top goal scorer in Modu Fool. Um, we've got the the best right back in the world. Um, we've got strength throughout the team. We've got England's number one in goal. Um, we know who we're going to play. You know who we're going to play. Roberto Mancini knows who we're going to play. Um, and I think, rightfully, um, he should be afraid. This game is one of the very biggest, and all the Ipswich Town fans are sure to be watching with high expectations. Is that making you at all anxious? I wouldn't say this is the biggest game um, of my career at Ipswich Town, even. You've got to remember this time last year, we were in the Europa League final. Um, we've, As said, we've been here before, we know what to expect. Um, we're confident that we can go into this match um, and pick up a win. Um, we don't have any reason to be afraid of Manchester City. We've beaten them already this season, and we've beaten Manchester United in the semi-final. Um, I, I don't, I don't think we need to be afraid. The players know what's expected of them, um, and I think I'm very confident in them to go out there and pick up a win. You'll be missing Johnny Vaughan for the big match. Just how big a blow is that to your team's hopes? Yes, it's a big shame that Johnny's not able to play in this match, uh, but you know, he has a tendency to go go missing in these kind of games on occasion. So. The form that Mesidor has been in since he's come into the side, it might even be a blessing in disguise. Johnny's going to go away, he's working on his knee, um, and he'll probably come back bigger, better, bionic leg maybe, um, and I think we'll be fine without him. Last time out against Southampton, your team played very well. You must be hoping the side carries that form over into the next game. Look, we're in great form. Um, we've played well, not just in the Southampton game, we've been playing well in every game that we've played, le- played recently, um, apart from... You know, those dodgy ones. Um, but we're a good team. We know how to win a match with the top goal scorers in English football. And hopefully we're going to continue that into the FA Cup final today. A number of people would agree that your 4-1 win over Manchester United was the highlight of Ipswich Town's run to the final. Is that something you also believe? Um, yes, obviously the Manchester United game was a massive result. To beat them 4-1 gives us a lot of confidence going into this game today. Um, and hopefully um, sets on old nervous Robbie on edge as well. And... Um, it was one of those things, beat Manchester United, hopefully we get Oldham in the final. It's not worked out that way, but we've shown that we can beat the biggest team in Manchester. Do you reckon that will get him? That should get him. Um, so if we can beat them, why can't we beat the, the, the blue upstarts? Winning the FA Cup would undoubtedly be the pinnacle of the Ipswich Town's campaign. Just how badly do you and your team want it? Uh, it would be a fantastic end to what's been a fantastic season. We've finished in the top four for the first time. We've equaled Ipswich's highest ever league position. 
um, it, by finishing in second place. As I say, with the top goal scorers, we've had a Champions League run. We're back in the Champions League next season. Um, it would be the icing on the cake to, to bring another trophy back to Alf Ramsey Arena. Um, and, you know, we like having the FA Cup around. We've missed it this season. Um, and it would be very nice to have it back where it belongs at Ipswich Town. You have a fantastic record against Roberto Mancini in your career. Why do you think that is? I, you know, I think I've already made my thoughts on, on, on Nervous Rob quite clear. Um, he, he just, he's afraid of me. I'm bigger than him. I've got a beard. He hasn't. I've, I've got my... I've got my theory that he probably can't grow one, which might might be part of the fear uh, that the man feels when he looks at me. Um, so I'd I'd hate to suggest that there's any luck involved. I think I'm just better than he is, um, and he needs to just get over it and move on. Do you think there's a psychological advantage to be had by maintaining such records, and are you confident of doing so here? Look, results are irrelevant. I've got a psychological advantage over the man who rocks back and forth on his chair in a job interview. End of. Can you reveal how you'll be instructing the Ipswich boys to play? You know how we're going to play. We're going to attack, attack, attack. That's all we know how to do. Um, and there's going to be more of that today. We're just going to go out there. We're going to go and try and score five goals. If they score four, that's fine. We win. Manchester City will have to cope without Andre for the game. His absence is a massive boost for you, isn't Look, it? I don't care who, who is or who isn't playing for Manchester City. I don't know who Andre is. Andre the Giant? Was it? No? No idea. Don't care. Many pundits are suggesting that Manchester City's João Roberto could well be the deciding factor in the final. He's a top player, wouldn't you agree? Look, I don't know who he is either. Are you not spotting a pattern here? I don't know who plays for Manchester City. Um, this might be the... I mean, I said as much in the two job interviews I've had with him in the last 12 months. That might have something to do with the fact they've not given me the job. Um, I probably would have learnt some names if they'd have appointed me. They didn't. So, quite frankly, I don't need to know who plays for them. This is the first opportunity we've had to congratulate you on winning the English Premier League Manager of the Year. How does it feel to win such a prestigious award? Thank you very much. I mean, I've, it's, it's right up there with when I won the, uh, the Conference North Manager of the Year award. Um, interesting factoid for you. Um, when you're in the Conference North, it's the Manager of the Year award. Every other level up, it's the Manager of the Season award. Bet you didn't know that, did you? I know that because I've won them both. And I'd like you to find me another manager in the history of the world who's won both the Premier League Manager of the Year Award and the Conference North Manager of the Year Award. Um, and if if they have, they'll they'll be able, they'll probably know that fact too. So perhaps, perhaps it's not just me. There's no one else, is there? No? Good. The FA Cup decider against Manchester City will no doubt prove a fascinating managerial duel between you and your opposite number. No. What is your relationship with Roberto Mancini? Look, no. <laughs> you're obsessed with Roberto Mancini. Uh, the man has failed at Man City before. He's in the process of failing again. He didn't even get him into the Champions League. I don't know why they would, you know, let's let's role play. Hi, I'm Manchester City's owner. Uh, we've just sacked Pep Guardiola. What do we do? Oh, yeah, there's that old fella who used to manage us who's now at Everton. They're not in Europe. He must be good for us. Let's hire him. Ridiculous. Thank you very much, Kevin. Good luck out there today. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome to Season 13, Episode 10 of non to Legend. I'm Kev and coming up on today's episode, we have the FA Cup Final at Wembley against Manchester City. It's our second final in three years. Um, we want to pick up another trophy. We've won it. We've, the last two seasons have both culminated with us picking up a trophy. We want to make it a hat-trick. Um, we want to celebrate a fantastic end to a fantastic season. Um, I feel like I'm still in press conference mode. That guy was weird, wasn't he? Who was that asking the question? No? No idea. Um, right, this is the team that we're going to be playing today. Um, Matt Lee's in goal, obviously, England's number one. Um, a back four, you notice the uh, the conspicuous absence of Carlos Sabala, who's not been able to recover from his poorly wrist. Um, yeah, oh, I'll be able to train tomorrow, boss, but today my wrist is too sore for me to even be on the bench at Wembley. Sorry about that. You know, I got the opportunity to do my Argentinian accent, but other than that, disappointing. Um, so, Guiliani's at left back, Lazaroff at right back, and a back and the two centre backs. I'm saying back a lot. Dane and Bosmans. Bosmans, what a massive, massive game for him. He's only 21 years old. Um, still not played for Belgium yet. Um, he's, I mean, he's only started six games for us in the league. Um, average rating, not anything to write home about. Um, never played in a game of this magnitude before in his life. But he's got potential. He's going to be a good player for us. And this might, it's one of those games that will either make or break him. We'll know 
um, in five or ten minutes' time, whether Bosman's is going to be the answer as a backup centre-back for us or whether we need to dip into the transfer market in the summer. Um, in front of him, we've got Fritscher, and then a midfield two of Chris and Yusuf with Mesidoro, the, uh, the in-form man, the goal machine, uh, behind the real goal machines, Arendt and Fall. Uh, 42 goals so far this season for Fall. 17 for Arendt, which, you know, it's it's not the best return from him, but when you consider he's only started 14, 14 Premier League games, it's not too shabby. And, um, you know, it might be one of those days where he just starts to pile up the goals. And the one thing about Arendt that sets him apart from Modu Fall um, and the likes of Thierry Ambrose and players we've had up front for us in the past, we tend to have picked up in the past these kind of players, players who don't enjoy big matches. Well, Arendt's a little bit different. He thrives in the big match. We've seen it in Europe. Um, we've seen it in, in previous cup runs. This man loves a big match. Um, I'm a little bit alarmed to see all those downward arrows. Tell me he's not on the decline at 21 years old. 26 years old, sorry. But he's a big game player and I'm expecting a performance from Christian Arendt today. Um, on the bench, Ben Garrett appearing for Ipswich for the final time. We've already told him he's being released in the summer after his contract has expired. He's now so far down the football in pecking order um, that England have put a uh, League One goalkeeper in the squad for the Euros because they couldn't possibly put Ben Garrett in there as the third goalkeeper. Um, Walker Peters is also on the bench. He's also been left out of the squad for the Euros, but Will Leach is in and Will Leach doesn't even... Oh no, hold on, why have I got Will Leach... And Walker Peters on the bench. Oh, yes, because I've got no other defenders. Should I put Sancho on there? I mean, what are we going to do if we get an injury to a centre-back in the first minute? I guess we put Fritscher back there because he's been training to play there. If we got anyone else, you know what? I might stick Nuri on. For... No, we'll leave it like that. I know what I was... We've got no defenders. It's a problem. Um, so we'll leech and Walker Peters. You know, if we get two injuries at left-back, we're sorted. Uh, Valverde is also there, Lazio is there as well, Vossabel and Oliveira rounding out the bench. <sighs> Nervous, got Thierry Ambrose's tie on again. Might have to give it back at some point. He's over in Spain now, keeps asking me to post it. I'm not paying for postage to Spain, Thierry, don't be ridiculous. Um, let's go and play Manchester City in the FA Cup final. So, that's new. Look at this, we're playing Manchester City and we're the favourites. I mean, that is truly terrifying. We've never been the favourites against a team like this before. Um, whoever this is, who's this? Sky Sports. Kevin Finlay, you don't know what you're talking about. Lottery of the penalty shootout. Yes, Johnny Vaughan's a miss, but look, we've got the competition's top goal scorer. Mo Fall has scored more goals than Nesta Williams of Grantham Town fame. I mean, look at this guy. Should we scout him? Do we want Nesta Williams? Look at the amount of goals. This guy is a goal machine for Grantham. If I was still at Boston... I would be all over him. How is he still not signed for a team like Boston? Only down the road from Grantham. But yeah, come on, Modu. Let's make it a nice round 10. Get yourself a hat trick. Uh, ben Garrett has been left out because he's rubbish. What an unusual question. Um, yeah, I'm resting him. Um, yes, we're going to play free-flowing attacking football. You know how we roll. Why, why, why are we wearing Barcelona kits? I don't know that I've ever seen us play in these shirts before. I don't understand. This is, is this our away kit? I've been here seven seasons. Is this our away kit? Um, um, the cold and flu medication is still rife in my system. That might well be our away kit and I've just never noticed before. But I guess if these shirts make us play like Barcelona, perhaps it's a sign. Perhaps I'm going to become Barcelona manager over the summer. I noticed they set the record attendance for the, for the Europa League, which means they were playing in the Europa League which means they might be sacking their manager. Quite like to go there. That would be quite good fun. Right, what's happening? Man City are playing a 4-4-2, which is unexpected. Um, in fact, as the game's gone on, I've seen a lot of that from the bigger teams going to 4-4-2, and I don't really get it. Is that a trend in football? Should I be, should I be looking to replicate that? Um, for the first 10 years of this save, it was 4-2-3-1 everywhere. But now everyone seems to be 4-4-2. I guess that might be... a an indication of the regen managers coming through, maybe? Or not the regen, but the former players. Are we in? We're in! And Chris has put us 1-0 up. I mean, that man never scores. Look, have we seen that hair before? I don't remember it. It's brilliant. Um, but Chris has just put us 1-0 up in the FA Cup final. He actually, he's still never played for Brazil. He becomes eligible to play for England next season. Um, and I'm already thinking, well, perhaps England will wreck the Euros and I can become England manager. And the very first thing I'm going to do is invite Chris to come and play for us, I think. Because 
why not? He's been brilliant for us. I mean, that first two years, so-so. But since then, very important player. Um, so, yeah, you know, little potential spoiler there for you. Right, oh, Bosman's. Two good headed clearances. He's been learning from Carlos Sabala. Um, I'm still scared that they're just going to double up on him and just make him look silly. But, oh, I don't like this. They're running at us and we just can't stop them. And Matt Lee has just made a brilliant save, justifying why he's the best goalkeeper in England. I mean, it's nothing to do with the fact that there's no other goalkeepers from the Premier League in the England squad. He's there on merit. He is England's number one goalkeeper crisis going on at the moment, I think. Right, Arendt wins ahead of it, can't find fall. City are breaking on us again. and it, I mean, it seems to be wave after wave of Man City pressure at the moment. And it's a bit of a problem because we've got Bosmans playing in defence for us, um, which worries me. I mean, like I say, make or break, he might, have, he might be man of the match and go on to become captain and all that stuff. Last time I said that about a young defender, it was Jan's a man. So it's not a glowing, glowing recommendation, is it? I think he's playing in the French second division now. So much for my uh, my declaration that he'd captain us to Champions League victory when we spent fifteen million pounds on him when we first got into the Premier League. Right, we're one 0 up at half time here. <sighs> right, deep breaths. Where's my bottle of water? Always need a bottle of water for the FA Cup final. That's my management tip of the day for you. There you go. Calms the nerves. We're fine. Second half. Team talk. And um, this is Ian Culverhouse's final game for us as well. Uh, the assistant manager has been with me all the way through at Ipswich. He's retiring. Bless him. 63 years old now. Um, so, new assistant manager incoming. I wonder if Deli Adebola is still knocking around. Last time I hired an assistant manager, it was him. Um, Chris, no, not Chris, Yusuf looks like he's struggling a little bit. Who have we got on the bench in midfield? Valverde and Vosselbelt, so we're all right. I don't really know what's up with Yusuf, though. He doesn't seem like he's taken a knock, but he's, um does seem to be struggling a little bit. Perhaps he can't handle the big pitch at Wembley. Um, so already thinking he might be a substitution fairly early in this second half, unless he starts to recover some of that conditioning a little bit. Lazarov's been beaten there showing up his slight defensive frailty again and Raheem Sterling who must be drawing a pension by now um, forced Matt Lee into a save and then took the corner himself I mean he must be 40 by this stage why do why does the AI managers insist on keeping the old men around for so long I just don't get it right we need to make a change because oh dear Bosman's was massively out of position there and City are really starting to take control of this game. I say starting. We're, we've had less than 40% possession. It's like the semi-final all over again. Fingers crossed. Right, we need to make some substitutions. Yusuf is struggling. So Valverde's going to come on for him. Um, and we'll stick Chris as the roaming playmaker. Um, and then we need to take one of the strikers off. I think that... Mm, big game, man. Or... Mm, no, it's got to be Aram. Can't take the top goal scorer off. Neither of them have had a good game. All that bigging up Aram as the big game player. Not happened, does it? Right. Perhaps we should have done something a little bit more defensive. I mean, at some point we are going to have to stick some men behind the ball and just try and hold on. I know it's not our style and I'm terrified to do it with the fact that we don't have another defender to bring on. But oh, Motor Falls having a terrible game. Right. I am bringing Vossabelt on for Mesodoro. I don't really know how I'm going to do this. Am I dropping Fritscher back into the defence? I think that's the that's probably the thing to do here. He was training there not so long ago. Um, and then we can... I'm just moving everyone around a little bit. Valverde can go there and be an anchor man. And then I'm going to drop Lazio back to there. But still make him Trequatista. Modu Fall is going to come into the middle. You've seen this formation before. This is our please don't score a goal against us formation. Um, and we do a few tweaks like this as well. And I know I should have the, we should be training this. I say it all the time. You lot say it all the time in the comments as well. But I forget. Right. This is it then. We've just got to survive ten more minutes. We've got six men behind the ball. But we're playing Man City, and they're quite good. Oh, right, Fritscher. Should be playing at centre-back. Don't know why he's there. 
Fall. Can he find Lazio? He's just he has found Lazio. Lazio's in, and we've got a penalty. With five minutes to go in the FA Cup final, we have a penalty to put us two 0 up. Modu Fall is going to take it. He never takes penalties. But I guess it's because Yusuf's not on. Can he get his 43rd goal of the season? Come on, Modu, don't let us down now. Forget that it's a big game. And he scores and we're 2-0 up in the FA Cup final. It's his 43rd goal of the season, not his 42nd. I'm a buffoon. But, wow, look at this. I mean, that is, it takes, takes some stones to just tap it down the middle of the goal with five minutes to go in the Cup final like that. But he does it and... We've, we've done it, I think. I think we've won the FA Cup again. Come on, lads, we just need to hold on. It doesn't even matter if they score now. They've got 30 seconds. They don't have time to score twice, surely. We're on contain now, and they're just lumping it over the bar from miles away. And I think that's it. The final whistle has gone, and we've won the FA Cup. Fantastic. For the second time in two years, Ipswich Town have won the FA Cup. If this doesn't move me on to club icons, I give up. Oh, what's this? Full faith? Does that mean the board like me? That button. Did they, did they not like me before? For goodness sake. Right. Oh, iconic Chapman builds Ipswich Town legacy. Right, hold on. Let's have a look at this. Kevin Chapman has firmly cemented his status as an iconic figure at Ipswich Town after clinching the FA Cup in winning his fifth trophy at the club, which has spanned eight... What? In winning... Well, that's a really poor sentence, Ipswich board. I would have... Would have liked a little more effort going into what should be quite a, a big moment for us both. And you've messed up on grammar. Um, in winning his fifth trophy at the club, which has spanned eight years, Chapman has ensured a legacy that will live long in the memory, but one which may yet not be complete. It probably is if a big club comes in for me. The 45-year-old is already being spoken about in the same breath as the likes of Ipswich Town, Icons, Ray Crawford and Kevin Beattie, and fast securing his place in the hearts of the Ipswich Town faithful. Where am I? On the icons list, there I am. I'm mixing with the likes of Lasse Viggen Christensen and James Tavernier and Hadar and Nudson. I mean, these are my players. How did they get on here before me? These are all players who played for us in the championship and have left. Right, what more do I have to do to get onto this list? Because officially, we've never. We, we need a discussion in the comments because we've never set the rules for this save. It's called non league to legend. Say, we, say I stay at Ipswich. Say we win the league next season, and say doing that moves me onto this list. I'm officially a legend then. Is that it? Came over? Or do we need a new definition? Because the thing I've been nosing around, because this save's going quite well, I'm not used to it. Um, but if we look at the Hall of Fame, where am I on there now? Not even in the top 20. Do we need to be up here? Is that legendary status? Have I got time to do that? I mean, looking at me now, how old am I? I am 45 years old. So realistically, I've got another 20, 25 seasons to go. Maybe. If you've enjoyed today's episode, make sure you pop a like on there for me. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on, well, finding out where we're going to be next season. Who The sackings will start in a minute and we might be moving on or we might be challenging for the title it, it, it and realism mode on again it really comes down to who offers me the most money I'm on 40 grand a week at Ipswich if Bayern Munich or Barcelona or Man City Chelsea come in and offer me 60 70 grand a week I'm off unless Ipswich offer me even more and they don't have the money to do it because if we look at the Ipswich coffers terrifying um, and that is the main reason that we're never going to be completely established at this level because we just don't have the fan base to do it um i think i already told you to like and subscribe didn't i i mean take this as a second reminder and thank you very much for watching